You're about to watch a live stream from our Facebook group. It's a club where we pretty much just talk about board games all day long. And every week we give away free board games to people in the club. So if you're interested in coming to hang out with us, click the link in the description below. Hope to see you there. All right, so it's been a while since I've done this, so let's go ahead and do it. Today we are reviewing, oops, uh-oh, that's going to be a mistake, Portal. Uh, Portal, of course, is the Valve video game. Beloved, there's Portal, Portal 2. It's a spinoff of the Half-Life world universe, I think, which is also a Valve piece. Uh, and as you can see, the box art is very purposefully crappy. It's even, it has kind of like a worn edge. It's a faux worn edge. This isn't worn, but it looks like a game. It's from like 1976. Especially if you look at the back. It's just black and white, dull people. And if you look in the back, there's like scientists in the background, like watching these, I guess, test subjects playing the game. Very Valve, very, very funny. Very, uh, it's like their kind of humor. And uh, so let's just get right into it. Let's pop over. If I didn't mess up this camera too much, did I? Hopefully not. Ooh, a little bit. Let's see. Let's see if I can fix this without too much fuss. Will that work-ish? Yeah, that works. Sure. Just move everything down a little. I don't know why it's so jumpy, too. I got to figure that out. Uh, so anyway, it, it's a module tile kind of board. Um, where there's an old side and then there's a new side and the game is constantly shifting these test rooms so GLaDOS comes in who of course is the villainous robot and you place her in one of the tiles on the old side and when that happens whoever is in there like let's say I had one of my guys in here I'll put it there so you could see him I'm yellow in this in this version I don't know what's with all this jumpiness. But um, you can tell your color by the color of your portal gun. So we have a red. Let's say we have a red player. My son was playing red earlier. I'm playing yellow or orange, whatever that color is. And um, so my yellow person's in here. And GLaDOS would come in. And then whoever has the majority of player figures here wins this room, is rewarded. And these are the rewards. So the rewards here are three more test subjects. These people are called test subjects and a slice of cake. And so what I would do is I would take my reward, three test subjects, and let's say I want to put two of them up there and one of them here. You have to put them on this left side. And then everybody who's here, it gets incinerated. Or not incinerated, well, it just, it gets destroyed. Recycled, as GLaDOS calls it. And so this would just kind of come back to the pool of people and then you flip this over because there are different rewards on the different sides and you put it somewhere on the new side you get to pick and then that's it so things from this side are constantly getting destroyed and things are being created on the new side so this board changes quite a bit as you you know move pieces from here over to here uh oh what just happened there can i call a timeout people epic oh. Is it working again? It's working again. We're back. Um, so that's the, the gist of what happens with the flow. How you actually win is by getting these pieces of cake. And they're a little bit hard to see. We flip them on their side. Right? So we've got some yellow cake. We've got some red cake that kind of blends in. Uh, here, I'll put it on there so you can see it a little better. I'll put the cake on the walls. Um, so you're trying to get rewards on this side, whether it's more test subjects to help you out or more cake to win the game because the game ends when either someone has all of their cake incinerated which is bad this is the incinerator here um, or all or they have no more test subjects on the board um, so you get into a situation where if you have the most cake you want the game to end as quickly as possible so you want to either kill all of your opponents test subjects I don't have any red test subjects out here right now but let's put some or kill all your own, just to, you know, kind of trigger the end game. Um, so, some of the other things that are kind of extra rules are you can move adjacent. So, for instance, this, this uh, room here could move. This is adjacent, this is adjacent, this is adjacent, this is adjacent. Also, if there's a portal, then 
that room is adjacent. So if these people wanted for my move action, and you can see here are the actions, here's the turn order, this is considered adjacent. You could boom, teleport down there. Uh, so let's just talk about the turn. So first is deploy. Now deploy is where you could use one of these cards uh, and you get a card by, usually the way that you get a card is by moving a single one of your test subjects. If you move one instead of multiple, then you get a card. Or if uh, sometimes for rewards, the symbol here, that'll give you more aperture cards. That's what these are called. And when you use these cards, they have a special ability. So for instance, this one, if you could see, a little blurry. Can we... I really got to get a better webcam, huh? Look at this. I'll just read it to you. Cake. Earn one cake slice and deliver it to the chamber at the new edge of the labor laboratory. So this would, if I were to use this, I would get one piece of cake and I could put it anywhere on here. And let's say I put it here with this guy. That gets me a step closer to winning and it's on the new edge, which is good. That's sort of where you want to keep your cake. Because if your cake is in on the old edge, and this room gets recycled, it gets incinerated. Whereas your test subjects get returned back to your pool, um, the cake gets incinerated and it's out of the game, which is just no good. So after you use an aperture card, deploy, this is an optional step, you discard it and you flip it over and then it becomes a character. So there's always one character in play and it's always on the back of an aperture card. And this is like a new rule, almost flux style, uh, that applies to everybody. So you see Rick here, once at the start of each player's turn, they may choose to incinerate one of their cake slices to earn them two aperture cards. So this applies to everybody. So let's say player two here decides they don't need quite this much cake. They incinerate this and then they would pick up two cards. So these just pretty much give everyone a special ability, keep the rules a little uh, fresh and shifting. Uh, let's see what other kind of things you could do. Also, and let's say I have another card, uh, instead of deploying a card and using its effect that it has written out here, you can deploy it and instead use your portal gun. And the portal gun says here, when deploying an aperture card, you may choose to ignore the actions printed on the card and instead deploy your portal gun, which lets you place the two portal tokens in any two chambers, excluding the old edge. Okay, that's a, that's a rule that I missed. We thought that you could move the portal to the old edge, and it makes sense that you can't. Ugh, we got some issues. Come on. Come on. Come back. Okay, we're back. I really got to get a better setup. So let's say I were to do that, right? I decided to deploy my aperture card. I don't use its ability. Instead, I use my portal gun. So what I could do now is I could take these two portal tokens and put them anywhere. So let's say I want to put it... Let's say I have a guy here, right? And, and I put one portal here, and I put one portal up there, right? So what I can do now is then I move, because you deploy first, and I move. You can actually move one piece of cake with you, either yours or your opponent's, doesn't matter. So I can move here to try to get closer to the edge, because I want my guy to get close to the edge because I want the rewards. And I would also like to move his cake closer to the edge so that it gets incinerated. So there is this kind of dance where you're trying to move your cake to the left side of the board so it doesn't get incinerated while moving you and your opponent to the right, your opponent's cake to the right. And so that it can get pretty complicated, the various things you want to do. When I was playing earlier with my son, he was trying to trigger the end game because he had more cake in place. So what I started doing was I just started bringing his cake to the right so that it got incinerated, and then he ended up losing because of that. So it does seem pretty strategic, pretty complicated. Um, that's about the basic rules. There's a few other things. There's a companion cube uh, space. So when you use this or certain cards, they let you use the companion cube, which if you are familiar with the game, it's the beloved companion cube. And you put it somewhere, uh, and then I believe that person becomes so infatuated, that test subject, that they can't collect rewards. So you would use that to screw over your opponent. Come on. Come on, Epicam. Stop doing that. That's really annoying. Uh, and then, what else? And then there is the turret, which again, same thing. There's a turret symbol somewhere there. 
uh, which lets you move the turret. And there's also lots of cards that let you move the turret. And you can't really see the turret that well. You put them like that. But, you know, these little guys from the game. And what you can do is if you move them, then it just destroys all the people. Not the cake, but it destroys all the people on a, all the test subjects on a space. Um, that's about that's about it. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Again, we're in our black and white. There we go. Um, it's uh, I'm not sure how good it is yet because I realized that we're playing a little wrong and I don't know, just need to test it out a little bit. But it is kind of cool how the pieces are, the board is constantly shifting and your goals are kind of shifting too and the rules change a little bit. So it is uh, a little a little random in that sense. Um, how fun is it? I don't know. I'm going to have to play it a little more. The jury is still out on it. Let me see. Who just came in? Oh, my wife's in here, even though she's back there on the couch. And no, you're not? It looks like you're in the chat room here. Eric's in here. I've been meaning to ask since I noticed you were over near Philly area. Think of hitting up PAX Unplugged at the end of November. Uh, I don't have any current plans, but maybe I could be convinced, Eric. We'll see. What's up, Priam? Uh, so let's just head back here. If you could see behind me, Finn is actually playing Portal in the background. When we were playing this, he got all excited to play. So here we are. So anyway, this is Portal, the uncooperative cake acquisition game. And a lot of people like how it spells out that it's uncooperative because that's definitely the, the humor in Portal. If you look, it's got like an old 1970s kind of rule book. And it asks you to read out in a robotic voice, hello, humans, you know, this whole kind of GLaDOS script. And it's full of that, like, cheeky kind of humor throughout. So anyway, I'll uh, play it some more. I'll let you guys know what I think. And thank you for watching. See you soon.